All right, welcome to my tutorial series for creating your own programming language. You may think that creating a language from scratch will be very hard, but it's actually pretty simple. In this series, we're going to create a simple arithmetic programming language that can execute basic mathematical expressions. To get started, we first have to understand how a programming language works. Suppose we have a simple expression we want to calculate. We can define a token to be a recognized symbol or set of symbols. We can then classify our tokens as numbers, punctuators, like punctuation, or operators, which themselves are a subset of punctuators. In a more complex language, like the ones you are familiar with already, you will also have things like characters, strings, identifiers, and keywords. You can use the subtraction to represent all syntax elements of a language. We can then create a component called a lexer to go through our source code symbol by symbol and construct a list of these tokens. This is the stage where white space and by extension formatting is stripped away. In this list, each set of symbols inside single quotes represents a token. The letter to the left represents the type of token. P for punctuator, O for operator, and N for number. It is also useful to append an end of file token to the end of our list. Now that we have a list of tokens, we need to construct what is called an abstract syntax tree using a parser. An abstract syntax tree, or AST, is a data structure that represents our code. If you aren't familiar with tree structures in computer science, you're still likely familiar with trees since your files and directories are a tree structure on your computer. Our parser will go through our list of tokens and compare them against our language's grammar, which we will see shortly. Our grammar contains multiplicative operations, exponential operations, etc. With those comes a natural order of operations defined in the grammar itself. We then use recursive techniques to implement that order correctly. I recommend you brush up on recursion before we program the parser. The order in which operations must be performed depends on the structure of the tree. We will perform a depth first search on the tree, starting at the root and working our way down. The desired values will then rise up to the top. This process will be called visiting. Our visitor can be one of three possible things. It can be a compiler, which generates assembly code that can be assembled and ran to calculate our value. An interpreter, which simply runs code to calculate the value. Or a transpiler, which generates code in another existing language. This code can then be compiled or interpreted depending on the language that you chose to transpile into. There are benefits to all of these approaches. Compiling will be the fastest, but requires knowledge of assembly. Your compiler will also have to be written separately for every single CPU architecture that you want to support. Transpiling is, the, is easier than compiling, but due to the extra steps, it can be slower. Lastly, interpreting is the simplest to implement. However, it also often has the slowest code execution. In this series, we will be building an interpreter. As you can see, however, the first two steps are the same, regardless of your visitation method. In fact, languages are entirely separate from their visitation method. Python is most commonly interpreted, for example, but Python itself is just a syntax. It can be transpiled or compiled if you desire, and those implementations exist. If you felt inclined, you could create all three visitation methods for your language in one project. So now that you know how languages are parsed, let's take a look at the grammar we will be implementing. Now, this may look overwhelming at first, but let's just walk through it. At the foundation of our language are primary expressions. These have the highest priority, so they contain obvious things such as numbers and parenthetical expressions. Besides parenthetical expressions, which simply specify order, I'm also including absolute value brackets and some custom syntax to showcase what you can create. 
This is your language, so you can make it how you want. These underscore brackets represent floor brackets, and the caret brackets represent ceiling brackets. These will allow us to round expressions up or down to the nearest integer. The next highest priority are unary expressions. Specifically, these are left unary operations. Here, we have the unary plus, which is a no-op, doesn't actually do anything besides style the code. We have unary minus to make numbers negative, and I've added a unary rounding operator, making use of the tilde character. Notice that all of these definitions are recursive. This is because expressions are naturally recursive. Consider negative negative 10. That should be a valid expression, so our unary expression has to be defined in terms of itself. If there are no operators, it is simply a primary expression. Regardless of how many uni unary operators there are, this grammar will parse any unary expression. Next, we have exponential expressions. Notice here that the recursive reference to itself is on the right side of the operator. That is because exponents are performed right to left. In the multiplicative expression following, the recursive reference is on the left, since they have to be done left to right. Here we have the familiar multiplication, division, and remainder operators. Lastly, we have additive expressions, which allow us to add and subtract. We then alias our lowest priority grammar simply as expression. Notice how each expression references the one above it. This is how the priority works. Before we can construct an additive expression, for example, we must first construct a multiplicative expression. So if one exists, it will be nested inside the additive expression. And then when we traverse our tree, we'll go as deep inwards as possible, which means the multiplication will happen first. If you are constructing your own language, I recommend checking out the links in the description and studying the grammar of other programming languages. Then design the grammar that you want. Find a good notation to document it with and then begin writing. In the next episode, we'll start coding our Alexa.